Well, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us for another Cornerstone Online service. Excited that you are taking the time to spend it with us. And we're excited because uh, God's continuing to do exciting things in our community. I know that uh, many of you have been praying and hoping and just really looking forward to being out and about with less restrictions. And that's happening because our cases of COVID are going down. And we can really thank God for that. Uh, and so as we join together for our service, before we jump in, I want to read one psalm. It's a familiar psalm to many of you, Psalm 100. And as I read it, feel free to read it along with me, but just let's let the words just sweep over us afresh as we worship God today. Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. So as we continue with our service, let's purpose to make a joyful noise unto the Lord because he has given us this day to do just that. Well, today, Pastor Eversley will be finishing the series, Hearing God's Voice. In week one, does God still speak? And then in week two, we looked at expect God to speak. And today, the title is Speak, Lord. So before we jump into that, let's sing this song together. Turning lives around You are here oh, 
His name is above loneliness. Oh, his name is above disease. His name is above cancer. His name is above every other name. We've come to the time in our service where we continue our worship in our giving. Uh, we want to thank you so much for your continued support. God has enabled us to continue to faithfully minister uh, to you, our congregation members, and our community, and it's all because of your support. But we want to ask you to continue to support us. There are some things that we still want to see accomplished and some other ministry opportunities that we want to be able to jump into that we feel God leading us to. And we're only going to be able to do it with your support. So would you continue to support us? Go to cornerstone.bm forward slash give and all of our giving information is there.
Good morning, Cornerstone. So this week we are at part three of our three-part series in hearing God's voice. And hearing God's voice is such an important thing. In order that we know what direction to take, we need to hear from God in our lives because we enter situations and often we are, we are like, like we're blindfolded as we enter. We're spiritually blindfolded. And what we need to do is hear God's voice in order to know which direction to take. Because oftentimes, um, we, would, we would select a direction based on what's most comfortable, what looks best for us. However, that may not be the direction God wants to take. So we need to know that God is leading us. And so we're going to do a review of the last, a five-minute review of, of weeks one and week two. And then we'll begin with hearing God's voice. And our subtitle this week is Speak, Lord. Our subtitle in week number one was Does God Still Speak? And we started with God speaking in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy chapter 2, where uh, Moses is giving Israel a history lesson and reviewing what happened. And he says over and over, we did this because God directed. We did this because God spoke. God said, God said, that's why we did what we did. And so we saw that God gave direction to Israel in the Old Testament. Um, so it's God's, God gives direction, and then it's our responsibility to follow God's direction. But what about the, the New Testament? We looked at John 10, verses 1 through 6, and John 10, verses 25 through 30, where Jesus describes this relationship between a sheep and a shepherd. But what he's really describing is a relationship between himself and his sheep. And the thing that he says in there is, my sheep hear my voice. So what Jesus was saying is, the natural default of our relationship with him is that we hear our voice. Basically what he's saying is, uh, not hearing his voice is, is not how we should be living. But then it says they hear his voice, but then it says they follow him. And it also says that they wouldn't follow any other voice. Then we looked at why it's important to hear from God. And we said we need to get God's direction. We need to make sure the fights that we're fighting are the ones that he desires us to. Because in Deuteronomy chapter 2, they were told... You get to this land, you're not, you don't fight these people, you don't fight these people. When you get to this land, this is where you have to fight. But he said, don't fight these people, bless these people. So we know that we're fighting the right fights, fights and we're also breath, blessing the right people. And also, so we possess only the things that God would have for us to possess. We can oftentimes desire things that God doesn't have for us. And God told them on several, on several occasions, Deuteronomy chapter 2, this is not the land, this is not the land, but this is the land. And also, we want to make sure we hear from God so that we can receive his blessing. And then we said, what stops us from hearing from God? First, we says our senses aboard our faith, things that we see cause us um, fear, anxiety, worry. And so those things cause us not to hear from God. We looked at David and Goliath and we said, the men of Israel couldn't even have heard from God if God came to them and said, I want you to fight Goliath because their fear, their anxiety, their worry would have caused them to dismiss that. So we elevate the things that we see um, above the unseen. We elevate the, the temporal above the eternal. And then we said, we oftentimes don't put ourselves in a position of, physical position, a spiritual position, an emotional position to hear from God. And then we looked at how does God speak in 2021, and we said he speaks primarily through his word. Um, he also speaks through his son and his people. He speaks through his voice. He speaks to our conscience, speaks in our thoughts. He also speaks through his creation, and also by his actions and what he allows in our life are often meant to uh, communicate something to us from God. And then we ended here. God speaks to anyone who makes the time and effort to listen and listens to anyone who makes the time and effort to speak. In week chapter 2, we looked at getting to the place where we expect God to speak and we focus mainly on expecting God to speak when we pick up his word. But here are some of the things that we said. We can never relinquish our responsibility to hear from God. Even if somebody else comes to you and says, God told me to tell you the responsibility for the word of God uh, in our lives, us living it out is always ours. We can't look, say, well, I did this because they told me that God said. We need to ensure that God says for us. And then we said our thoughts are, are not his thoughts. His thoughts are so much higher than ours. His ways are so much higher. So when we're listening for God, we shouldn't just be listening for things that line up with our thoughts. 
He spoke everything into existence. And so we need to understand that the plans that he comes up with sometimes may confound us, but it doesn't mean that that's not his voice. Then we said, what is our primary reason for hearing from God? We need to be desirous to hear from God for his plans, that is, his kingdom coming on the earth and how we can be used in it. We can't just be listening to God because we have a problem that we need him to, to give us uh, counsel on. We do listen for that, but we also need to be listening so that we can execute his plan on the earth. Then we said, when we, what we receive from God and hearing from God is often linked to our expectancy. And many times in the Bible we saw that Jesus didn't do miracles because people didn't expect. Um, and so, and also when you're expecting, you're more, um, you put yourself in a position to hear from God much better. If you're not expecting, God can speak and you may not even recognize his voice. We also said we need to develop an attitude of expectancy. And we said oftentimes disappointment in our past causes us not to have expectancy in our future. And we said God does not look at our past to determine how he is going to work with us in our future. And then we said God intervenes where he finds expectant people. So we need to be expectant people. And here's where we ended. How often do we ask big things of God but do not expect or prepare to receive the very thing we've asked for. Developing an expectancy of hearing from God when we read his word. We looked at Priscilla Shira's five P's of Bible study, and we said they were position, position yourself to hear from God, pour over it, look intently into it, pull out uh, the things that God may be saying to you, pose questions, am I... Do I believe this promise? Um, ask yourself questions, ask God questions, and then plan obedience, because when you are obedient to the word of God, it puts you in a place to hear from him again. And this was the last thing that we looked at, and that was live in a constant state of expectancy and leave room for God to come in as he decides. That's Oswald Chambers. I want to bring to your attention, before we start uh, week three, a resource. Um, this is Priscilla Shiwa's books, on discerning the voice of God. One of the best resources I have ever, ever seen on this topic. Um, I found it, I can't remember how long ago, and it was just incredible help for me in this area. So I'm gonna recommend that you look this up, get it, there's a workbook as well. There's also, I saw online they have an audio book now. So it is a tremendous resource if you want to continue to study through this area. Now we come to week three. And we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 3. Let me first tell you what was happening in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Okay? So in 1 Samuel chapter 1, there was a man named Elkanah who had a wife named Hannah. Well, he actually had two wives. wives. One was uh, fruitful, the other was barren. So Hannah was barren. So what Hannah would do was she would compare herself to... Uh, the other wife, and so she would struggle to see why her husband would even find favor in her. But her husband loved her, and he constantly would remind her that even though she is bearing no children for him, he loves her. I mean, he said to her in Scripture, he says, don't I mean more to you than ten sons? And he said that because Hannah was depressed, she was not eating, and he's saying, well, isn't it about how much we love each other, even if you don't... Um, even if you don't give me a son, isn't it about how valuable we are to each other? So Eli is a priest in the temple, and Hannah goes to the temple to pray about this matter. And so you can imagine how Hannah was praying. When you have something that is that close to your heart, you know how you pray, right? I mean, it was this, like this for, for um, Marshall and Tess, Marshall and uh, myself, when we were in this situation, um, we, I prayed probably differently than I've prayed for anything else. And I remember when we were in Ethiopia and we met Tess and we loved Tess and then we were told we couldn't take her. I remember how I prayed different than I prayed for anything else. Why? Because this thing was important to me. Now, it says that Eli saw her and actually thought she was drunk because of the way she was praying. And he rebuked her and then she says, no, 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 I'm not drunk. And she explains why she is praying. So Eli says, God bless you. And then later on, God blesses her with a son named Samuel. But what she had promised God is that she would dedicate this first son to him. 
So she has Samuel. After she has weaned Samuel, she takes Samuel to Eli in the temple and she says, I want him raised in the way of the Lord. And then after that, Hannah has more children as well. Okay? So now we get to um, 1 Samuel chapter 3. Eli is mentoring Samuel. Eli is raising Samuel in the way of the Lord. And in 1 Samuel chapter 3, here is what we read. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went back and lay down. Again, the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. So the, Lord, the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So what it says now is, in his early stages here, Samuel did not recognize the Lord's voice. And this is the journey that we're supposed to be on. When we get saved, initially, we're not familiar with the Lord's voice. But in, first, in John, we read that um, after we spend time with God, we should become familiar with his voice. So Samuel doesn't recognize the Lord's voice. And then it says, a third time, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went back and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Now we're going to do, deal with two types of listening today. We're going to deal with our listening to what God has already spoken. And we're also going to talk about our listening to those things that God needs to speak in our lives. Those things that, um, you know, they're, they're, they're morally neutral. You know, it's not even right or wrong, a decision, but you need direction from God to make a decision. So if it's, if it's morally neutral, it means that, you know, neither are wrong, neither decisions are wrong, but you need God to, to let you know which one is, uh, which direction you should go. And so we're going to speak to both of those things today, and I'll try to make it clear which one of those things we are talking about. So, number one, if we want God to speak to us concerning the things that are important to us, we must first want to hear him speak concerning the, thing that, the things that are important to him. Now, I want us to understand this right off the bat. Everything that is important to us is important to God. But the problem is, not everything that is important to God is important to us. And what we need to do is get to a place where we ensure that everything that God has spoken, that is his agenda and his priority, is our agenda and our priority. What are God's priorities? What are God's priorities? And then search your life to see if God's priorities are your priorities. If God's priorities are the souls of men, I ask you, have you heard him on that? And are you living it out? Does your life demonstrate that you have heard God speak already with regard to the things that are important to him? I'm going to ask you a question that God asked me and it broke me. I just told you that when we were in Ethiopia and we were told that we um, couldn't take tests, two things happened. There was one day where I just couldn't pray. Like my soul was so 
downcast. I couldn't get words out of my mouth. But then there were times where I did pray and I prayed in tears because this thing was so important to me. And God asked me as I was getting ready for this and looking at Hannah praying and knowing how she must have prayed because of how this was, how important this was for, to her. When was the last time, this is what God asked me, when was the last time you prayed like that about something that is important to God? <laughs> when was the last time, Eversley Lewis, that you prayed like you prayed about your daughter because it was so important to you? When was the last time that you took on one of God's priorities so much so that you prayed about it like it was that important to you. And when I heard this from God, I was broken by it because God is, is, is saying to us, if he has already spoken about the things that are important and we are acting like they're not, then how do we expect to hear from him about the things that are important to us? Now, one of the things about the story I neglected to say was Eli had two sons who were serving in the temple as well. And these two sons did not follow God at all. Oh, they were wicked. Now watch this. Watch what Eli says to Samuel. So we're back in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 15 through 18. Samuel laid on until the morning. And then, oh, so, so the Lord had just spoken to Samuel and he said that he was going to come against Eli's house because his sons were so wicked, right? So this is now the news that Samuel has to deliver to his mentor. So Samuel laid on until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision. He did not want to tell Eli what God had told him. How could I possibly tell this man who I love, who's mentoring me in the Lord, how could I tell him what God just told me was about to happen? But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here am I. What was it he said to you? Eli asked, do not hide it from me. May God deal with you be it ever severely if you hide it from me, anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, he is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. Eli wanted to know what God said. Even if the message wasn't what he wanted to hear, he wanted to know God said this. And he told Samuel, it, it's God's word. Therefore, I need to know what he said even if the message is bad. So Eli wasn't just looking to hear from God for things that pleases him. He wanted to know what God's mind was, what God's heart was, what God's about to do. And this is where we need to be. We need to be so desirous of hearing from God that we say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Secondly, if you want God to speak, you must engage in your relationship with him and understand how this relationship is structured. Okay? Now, first thing I want to say, we have to understand that the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ is a love relationship. We have a God who loves us perfectly. And one of the things that I, I think we need to get a, get a grasp on so that we can hear from God is how he loves us. He loves us too much not to tell us the truth. He loves us too much not to point out error. He loves us too much not to discipline us. Matter of fact, the Bible says if God doesn't discipline you, you need to check whether or not you're his child. Now, it is important that we come to terms with how much he loves us if we are going to hear from God. Matter of fact, here's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 18 through 19. May have the power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. It says, when we understand something about how he loves us, we're full, we're filled, full to the measure of God. And that is the place where we can hear from him. 
Do you understand when we don't understand uh, how God loves us? Um, our ears aren't in tune, aren't even looking for his voice, and we struggle to see how he loves us? Now, one of the things that, um, that the Bible says is, God desires us, listen to this, listen to this statement. God desires us to draw near to him, and when we do, he automatically draws near to us. Near to him, near to, he comes near to us. That means if we're distant from him, then there's a distance between us and him. And in that distance, it becomes very difficult to hear his voice. Understand how much he loves you and draw to him. One of the things that we've, we've done, I think, that stops us from hearing from God is, instead of understanding that this is a love relationship and he's involved in every single thing, we've interpreted his loving intervention as coincidence. There's been so many things that God has spoken, so many things that God has done for us, and we, because we don't understand that he's involved in every piece of our lives, that he loves us this way, that everything that concerns us concerns him, that he's done some things in our past, he's spoken to us, and we have wrote it off as coincidence. In order for us to hear from God, we have to see what he, we have to consistently see what he has done and what he is doing in our lives. There's no such thing as coincidence with God. He is lovingly involved and working all things together for our good. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10, it says, The Lord came and stood there calling as at um, the other times. Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Now, we have to understand that it's a love relationship, but in order to hear from God, we have to understand also that he is Lord and we are his servants. Now, I, I know, you know, the word servant is not something that, that um, you know, sits well with our spirit oftentimes. But imagine you're serving a master who has your best interest at heart. Well, you don't have to imagine it because you are. Best interest at heart at all times and does everything um, to, to work everything for your good. So we have to understand this in order to hear from God. He says, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Okay? And we have to understand and have God as Lord if we are going to hear from him. Ephesians chapter 1, verses, two, verses 22 to 23 says this, and God placed all things under his, Jesus' feet, and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So God, the Father, placed everything, including the church, under his feet. He is the head. And what's the role of the head? What is the role of the head? The role of the head is... And, and so Jesus describes his body as, as um, uh, Jesus describes his church as a body and describes Jesus as the head or the brain. So what is the role of the head or the brain in a physical body? To receive input from members of the body and to give instruction. So your brain receives input from the members of your body, your fingers, your hands, your legs, your toes, but then it sends information down to every single member in order that that member does what it is supposed to. If I want to point, my brain sends uh, a message to my finger, and there it goes. This cannot happen without the brain sending in a message. And what, basically, if that is true, then we should be the same way with Jesus. And if Jesus doesn't speak to us, then how could that be? So what it's basically saying is, as the brain sends messages to the members of the body, so does, uh, so does God send messages to the members of his body. Secondly, it says uh, the brain makes the decisions. The brain is the one that makes the decisions. You know, the hands, the feet, they don't make any decisions. They don't decide what's going on. The brain is the one who makes the decisions. It initiates actions. If I want to walk, my brain sends uh, signals to my, um, my feet and the rest of my body, and I walk. It coordinates the activities. That means if I'm running, I need my hands, my arms, my legs, my everything to be involved. And so the brain coordinates all of those activities so my running doesn't look spastic, right? And Jesus does the same for the body. Therefore, we have to hear his voice. Just as the brain sends signals to the bodies, 
So Jesus sends signals to his body. Thirdly, understand the importance of his word and the role of his spirit. Now, what we're talking about here is understanding the importance of his word with regard to him speaking to you, and, and also with regard to the spirit and how the spirit and the, the word um, relate to each other in order to speak to us. You ever read the Bible and stuff leaps off the page like crazy? Like you, some days you read it, you know, and it's, you, you know, you're enjoying it or whatever, but other days, like, just truths just leap off the page. That is the Holy Spirit of God. And we're going to talk a little bit about how these two work together. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 19 through 21, it says this, The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. All, and all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel, Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. Now listen. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. He revealed himself to Samuel through his word. So now let's talk about the word and the Holy Spirit and how they interact. John chapter 16, verses 13 through 15 says this. But when he, this is Jesus speaking about sending the Spirit, when he, the Spirit of truth, comes... He will guide you into all truth. What is all truth? All truth is his word. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. So everything he makes known to us, he makes known from, he gets it from Jesus. And all that belongs to the fa Father is mine. So um, the Father communicates to the Son, who communicates to the Spirit, who communicates to us. That is why I said, the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. And then in John chapter 14, verse 25 through 26, it says this. All this I have spoken while still with you. Jesus is speaking before he leaves. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. He will remind you of everything that I have said to you. So here's how it works. We fill ourselves with the word of God. We spend time in the word, we pour over it, and we fill our spirit and our soul with the word of God. And then you need guidance. And then the Spirit reminds you of principles from the Word of God. Now, often the principles aren't telling you, go this way or do that. But, but the principles, what they do is, they, maybe they, they, they don't tell you which direction to go, but they're principles that guide you in your decision making. And that's often what happens to me. I, I'm, I'm trying to make a decision. I'm saying, speak, Lord. And then the Spirit brings to a brush to my remembrance that guides me and helps me to make my decision with... Um, much more clearer because I've heard from God. So there is a connection between the Word of God and the Spirit. We need to give the Spirit, the Word, um, in, in us in order for Him to remind us of what we've already heard. And then, four, this is so important. In order to hear from God, we have to guard our heart and allow God to renew our minds. Understand something. That when you got saved, well, any time in your life, you have a flesh, and the flesh wars against the spirit, right? So there's a flesh in you that doesn't want you to hear the voice of God and actually wars against it. And what has to happen if, this, if we're going to hear from God is we need to guard our heart and we need to allow God to renew our mind, okay? And, and one of the things that, it, that I would say in, in this, it is important to have people who know you and know you well in this area so that you can run things by them, so that you can talk about what's going on in your heart, so that you can talk about what is going on in your mind. Now, like I said before, you are always responsible for the word of God in your life, but we should always have mature people around us who can assist us, okay? Wise people seek solitude. Fools seek isolation. We should always have times where we solitude, where we come, come apart with God, but fools seek isolation. That means they remove themselves from the body completely and try to live this Christian life all by themselves. Okay? So God speaks to me 
often uh, in my thoughts, right? In my conscience, right? And this is why it is so important to guard your heart and have your mind be renewed by God's word. It is important for you to understand something, and that is this. The devil can't place thoughts in your minds. Now, the devil can put things in front of you to influence your thoughts, right? He can put something that you see, and all of a sudden you start thinking sinful thoughts based on it. But he can't make you think those thoughts. Now, oftentimes, the struggle that I have is trying to discern whether or not I'm hearing God's voice or it's my own voice. Well, for me, um, my voice often serves me. It often, <laughs> it often agrees with you know, what I want to do. But God's voice always glorifies him and always pr produces fruit in your life. That, that is the fruit of the Spirit. Okay? So here's what the Bible says about this. Above all else, guard your heart for, every, for everything you do flows from it. Now, think about hearing from God. It says, guard your heart for everything you do. And your heart is your emotions. It's how you feel, right? And what it is saying is, protect your heart from things that can damage it because everything flows from it. Secondly, the Bible says in Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 12, sorry, verses 1 through 2, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed in the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. It says when you allow God to renew your mind, then you can discern his will. Understand something, the significance of this. When you got saved, your mind was, was, even if you think you were a good person, your mind was completely set against God. And what God describes is a complete renewing of your mind. He's not talking about changing your mind. You know what he's doing? He's talking about a mind transplant, a renewed mind. The mind of Christ existing in you, all right? And the Bible says this is so important with regard to hearing from God, with regard to his will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Psalm 119, verses 9 through 11. Now, watch what it says here. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commands. I have stored your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So God wants us to guard our hearts and have our minds renewed because if we're allowing anything in our hearts, then you know how difficult it's going to be for us to hear anything but God except for him letting us know that what we're doing is wrong. And if we're not allowing our minds to be renewed, if our minds are not fixed on God, as we read uh, uh, the first week, if our minds are not fixed on things above, but right, re, uh, our mind is just overwhelmed with temporal thoughts, then it becomes difficult for us to hear from God. Point number five. Only one person speaks at a time, and your opinions are not of equal value. <laughs> this was one of the things that I really needed to learn if I was going to hear from God, okay? Have you ever speak to your children, right? Um, and your children seem to know what you're about to say, and so they preempt you, and then they just start talking and explaining because they think they're going to get in trouble, but really this is not what you want to say. And they talk and talk and talk and talk, and you're trying to um, get an inter interjection. And they're talking like their opinion has the same weight as yours, right? Well, you know how that makes you feel? I know how it makes me feel. I remember, you know, trying to tell my daughter something and she was like, but daddy, and she, you no, know, she went on and on and on and I'm like, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Whilst I care what you think, and God cares what you think, the opinion that matters most in this decision is mine, right? Now, some people might say in your parenting, that's not how, how it should go. But no one parents like that. Because if that were true, there'd be a lot less children in school. Because a lot of them would have, would have decided, I'm not going to school. Right? There are a lot of them that are in school because their parents have made the decision for them. All right? So 
while some people say, you know, you should be equals with your child, um, if, if I am an equal with my child, that means that every decision my child makes, I should just say, okay, you're an equal with me, that's fine. No one parents like that, even though they say that, no one actually parents like that. So, when God is speaking, you know what we need to do? Shut up! <clears throat> do you know how many times I've gone to God with something that's important to me and I've gone on and on and just blabbing and blabbing and, 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 and never, um, not getting my place in a position to hear from God? Um, and then, you know, I, 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 I wax eloquently about everything that's going on. And, and did you see this? And did you see that? And God's saying, yes, I see everything. Um, can I please instruct you? Can you keep quiet for a second while I instruct you? Very popular verses, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Do you understand what that means? That means when you are hearing from God, the thing that you cannot be leaning on is your own understanding, or you will never be able to discern the voice of God. If it has to line up with what I understand, how can I possibly hear from God? Then it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. You know what that means? While you are waiting for God to speak, do what you know he's, he wants you to do now. Don't put off doing what you know God wants you to do now because you're waiting for God to speak about something that's important to you. Because when you are in that position, it becomes hard to hear from God. Usually, I hear from God when I am in his word, when I am doing things for him, when my mind is fixed on him and not fixed on, God, I need this problem solved, so I need to hear from you. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10, Then the Lord came and stood there, calling as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, and here's what Samuel said, For your servant is listening. So basically what Samuel said is, I'm not listening to hear from somebody equal to me. I'm listening to hear from the Lord, someone who is over me. John chapter 10, verse 27 says, My sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. My sheep listen to my voice, which means that he speaks, I know them, and they follow me. So we listen, not just to hear, but to follow. We're going to end with two quotes. The first one, And the God who hears is also the God who speaks. He has spoken and is still speaking. Humanity remains his project, not its own. And his initiatives are always at work among us. So humanity remains his project. It's not, it's not, I'm not, we're not our own project, we're his. His initiatives are always at work among us. And then lastly, Mother Teresa said this, God speaks in the silence of the heart and we listen. And then we speak to God from the fullness of our heart, and God listens. And this listening and this speaking is what prayer is meant to be. I love that. I love that. Now listen, we could easily say, God, I want you to speak like how you spoke in the Old Testament and they heard an audible voice. But you know what I realized? Not everybody who heard God's audible voice did what he said. <laughs> so here's what we think. We think if I hear an audible voice from God, then of course I'm going to do exactly what he said. But go back to scripture. People like Jonah, not everybody who heard his voice did what he said. You know who does what he says? Those who draw close to him. Those who understand that this whole speaking and listening thing is about a love relationship. Listen. I'm not saying we're living in the end times, but I, everything I see around us seems to be a precursor to the end times. It seems to be getting things prepared for the, uh, a lot of the things that are to come in the end times. People are, will seem to be um, in a position now where they would accept a lot of the things that I was wondering how they could be accepted 
in the end times. I'm studying right now in Ezekiel the Gog Magog War, which seems to me, which is a consortium of countries coming against Israel. And I listen to what Iran's saying, what Turkey is saying right now. Seems to me this thing could pop off at any time. And and from my studies, it seems like this is something that happens around about the time um, of the the rapture. But if there, we always need to hear from God. But we especially need to hear from God if we are approaching the end times. Because as we th see these things happening, fear, worry, anxiety could easily rise up. And therefore, we could accept another gospel which allows us to be close to God but not have to stand for him or represent him in these times. But we want to draw near to God so that we hear from him, so that we don't just hear from him but we do what he says and we stand on the word that we know to be true. Saints of God, God still speaks. Expect him to speak and say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Father, today I want to thank you for your word. God, it is imperative that we hear from you because we want to be doing those things that you desire us to do, not just things we come up with our own or on our own or not something that somebody else tells us to do. Lord, help us to be vessels uh, ripe for your will, God. Help us to be people um, who are so in tune to what you have already said that we are familiar with your voice and we won't listen to any other voice, God. We would wait to hear from our loving God. Father, thank you that you, you still speak. Help us to be in a position to hear. And beyond that, help us to be in, a, um, in the heart and the mind to do what it is you say. To stand on your truth and to stand for it even when it gets tough. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks of God. I pray that these... Um, last three weeks have been a blessing to you. And I also pray that you will look into Priscilla Cyrus' book, The Discerning the Voice of God. I'm telling you, it's an incredible resource for you to continue your study in this area. Be blessed and know that God still speaks to his people.